Hi there, we are Marco and Dizzy. Uh, we bought an XS11 uh, and we sold her for a month right now and we did 1100 uh, nautical miles. And we will tell you everything, our experience about the boat in this YouTube video, so this is a review. Yeah, and, uh, first disclaimer, uh, this is not the start of another sailing YouTube channel. Uh, this is just an open and honest review of the boat after a month basically. Yeah. All right. Before we started this month, uh, my sailing experience was limited. I only sailed a Daler 38 and a Lagoon 42, but you did a lot more. Yeah, so I grew up sailing. I raced uh, in the laser in the, in the dinghy. Um, I, uh, we also rented in the past, actually we owned a Dufour 45 for seven years and also a Daler 38. Uh, and then we rented a Lagoon 42, a Lagoon 40, a Lagoon 46, a Fontaine Peugeot 40, a Fontaine Peugeot 47, a Sona 47, and the Nautic Tech. Uh, so those are the boats that we're basically comparing uh, uh, the XS11 to. With, of course, those were charter boats with a slightly different configuration than our own boat, uh, but we try to take that into account. So our criteria in yes. short? Proper bed, enough storage for the kite equipment, yes. two bathrooms, uh, and the ability to have uh, two to four guests come on board. And, and a good sailing experience. And a good sailing experience. Uh, so when we started looking at the boat, we actually first looked at the second the second hand market, um, Mono Hulls primarily. Uh, we looked at the Dufours obviously because we owned one of them, uh, Hanses, uh, and we basically came to the conclusion we needed a boat between 42 and 50 foot to meet our our, our well uh, requirements. Uh, the other issue that or not an issue, the other thing we noticed is that. How big the windows in a, in a monohull are, you always have the feeling you're going down into the belly of the boat or inside the, the basement basically. 80% of the volume of the boat is within the boat and uh, as we like also like to work a bit on the boat then it, it has a big advantage of being able to look around you. So, uh, and be I, able to see each other. If one yeah. is uh, at the steering wheel then yeah. we are able to get yeah. in contact. Yeah, so the other thing is when we looked at the second hand market, there were monohulls or catamarans, that the catamarans on the market were very often ex-charter boats and they very often were quite big. They're in the 45 category, a lot of them were in that category and actually that's just too big for us too. Uh, what we also noticed is that basically every catamaran uh, is already big enough uh, for a couple to cruise on. That's at least our opinion. Um, so we did a lot of research, uh, we looked at Monohulls and catamarans in the end. And then Axis came around and they were promising a well sailing, nice, not too big catamaran yeah, okay. for sporty young people. So we felt attractive and yeah. Yeah, I had to we start were... working out. No, <laughs> no but I mean, they were basically building a boat that said it's, it's, a, it's a compact, yeah. sporty, fresh, almost minimalistic boat. And that's something we really felt, uh, yeah, really, that, that felt good. And now we've been on a boat for a month. So here's a breakdown of the things we've noticed after sailing the XS11 for a month. Um, just to make it uh, digestible, we broke it up in two parts. Part one is about the sailing and the boat handling. And part two is more about the interior and the comfort. Uh, and for both parts, we have the pros and the cons, basically. First of all, the big difference with this boat are the twin uh, helm stations at the back for a couple of reasons. One, you have good overview, really good overview. You can see your sails really well. There's a good line of sight with your partner or uh, yeah, anyone else on the boat. And the other major result of that is that uh, the boom doesn't have to be so high, but the boom is super close to the roof and the fact that the the sheet, the main sheet, is not connected to a traveler, but with a double sheeting system on the on the, on the on basically on the back side of the boat itself, so not on the roof. Also leads to the fact that you can uh, trim your sail, your main sail, much better. We'll come to that later as well. Um, it's a sim very simple system, so there's no traveler that gets in the way or gets jammed. And the fact that you can use the whole width of the boat almost for trimming the main sail, that is a big big advantage. Uh, I think that the, I mean, it, it's just it's just much better than having a 
single helm station at the, on, to, on top of your roof, being a sports top or a flybridge or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, another big advantage of that is when you want to dock the boat, you, are, you can basically single hand this boat easily. You can dock it single handedly, it's super easy. Uh, Liz does it. Uh, I mean, yeah, it's. No, I mean, but it's. So it's easy. No, it's not easy, but I mean, it's not that you have done this a thousand times. No, but okay. uh, no, I mean, but it's uh, it's it's very it's it's the opposite of intimidating. I would say it's very easy to handle yep, because of that. It is. Another big plus of the double helm stations for us is that the fact that the helm stations are or the steering wheels are basically on top of the rudders, so the whole steering quadrant is uh, very efficient. If you compare that to the steering quadrant in a uh, in like a single helm station somewhere on the roof, it there is basically not much feeling sailing feeling left. The the, the feeling on the of the helm or at the helm on this boat is really much better than we experience with other catamarans. Another big plus, but I think this will also be a minus, uh, is the fact that the boat, in our case, we have the pulse line version, uh, mm -hmm. and it comes with a flying barber outhole. If I'm uh, if I'm correct, it's basically a third main sheet or a tweaker, uh, and you connect it on the outside of the boat, and you can really pull down on the boom, so you can flatten the back of the sill. You can flatten the sill much better because when you have a traveler on the top of the roof or all the way on the bottom, you only use part of the width of the boat. But with this uh, main sill setup, not only is it much simpler. Also in maintenance, etc., there is much less that can, can go wrong, like with a traveler, and you can actually use the whole width of the boat for uh, properly trimming the main. So I think this is a must. And spoiler alert: uh, it's also a minus because the tweaker or the flying bar, bar, bar outhole, I think, is an option, and it comes within the pulse line package. So if you don't go for the pulse line, I would definitely make sure to make sure you get one of those uh, bar outholders. Uh, it's, it, I think it's a must-have for, for every catamaran. Another advantage of this low boom is that actually you can walk over the whole roof and it's super easy to stow away the sills because they're basically at, at knee height. Uh, this really makes a big difference. Even, I mean, when we're out at sea or in the open ocean, if you have to put in a reef or whatever, if you have to get to the boom for whatever reason, it's just much safer. Mm -hmm. And an extra benefit is that we have put a ton of flexible, uh, walkable solar panels on top of the, that flat roof. Then uh, the boat is nine tons, so uh, that makes her fairly light for a cruising catamaran, and that weight savings partly has to do with the fact that the roof is uh, doesn't have to be as strong and heavily built as with the boats that have the main sheet attachment or the traveler on the roof. And another big advantage is that I actually have put the mast in front of the saloon, so it doesn't rest on the on the on the roof, and therefore the structure of the roof doesn't have to be as heavy. Another advantage of being in the back of the boat is you actually have a perfect overview of the whole boat. Uh, and if you want to single dock the boat, it's very easy because if, you, if you're on the back, especially if you have the dual engine controls, you can basically do everything yourself. If you compare that to, let's say, a Laguna of Tampa where you're on top of the roof uh, managing the boat, you very often can't see the back of the boat when you're docking. So, for example, when you're mad mooring and you have to reverse, um, you basically always need two or three people uh, to do it properly um, in, in heavy winds or everything. So I think this setup is is very very uh, very convenient, uh, and I think it's very makes the boat very easy to handle. It's very easy and simple boat to handle. One of the other things we noticed that the boat actually goes upwind quite well. Uh, we haven't tested it in all circumstances. But we've tested it in circumstances where there were quite a lot of waves, um, and so far. We, it looks like we are sailing at roughly 38 degrees apparent up to uh, 15, 17 knots of wind. So that, that that's quite that's quite good actually. Uh, she's making good progress. Again, it helps to be fairly light, uh, and that that works well. Mm -hmm. It's a very balanced boat. One of the things we also noticed, and that's not specific to this boat, but in general, when we do a longer passage for one or two or three days, with that includes one or two nights. Uh, is that actually it is so less, so much less tiring than being on a mono. Uh, mm -hmm. You can actually go to sleep. You're not leaned over. Uh, I mean, I took I took a shower when I got out of bed at 4 a.m. in the Bay of Biscay with four meters swell. And yeah, of course you have to hold on, but 
it it is actually really possible, and I I've never experienced that before. Um, I think it's a big plus. Mm -hmm. It's much less yeah, much less tiring. You yes. can cook. Uh, we have a, we have when we cook underway. Uh, we have an induction plate. It's very simple. Uh, yeah, it moves, but it doesn't move that much. Mm -hmm. Much less than uh, than the mono. Sort of a bonus uh, advantage of the helm stations in the back is that because you're so close to the water, you can actually hear the water uh, quite well, and that at least adds another two or three knots of boat speed, at least in your mind. So that's a big bonus. You really have the sailing experience. Yes. You're close yeah. to the water, uh, there are nice chairs, you're, you yeah. can sit really well, uh, the view is good. Yeah, it's, 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 it's a yeah. big plus. It's a big plus. Yeah. And, uh, again, we may be biased because we actually bought the boat, but in all honesty, it is really a the reason why we bought yeah. it. <laughs> and, but it's yeah. a sailor's boat, and yeah. we really liked it. Of course, uh, every boat has its uh, pros and also its cons, uh, and uh, we'll be open and transparent about that. So I think there are a couple of improvements that uh, this boat could have uh, had. First of all, I think that some of the alignment or the halyards leading into the mass are not optimal. Um, and I'll, yeah. So you can see that some of the halyards and sheets, they of course they, they, they have feeders and of course they don't chafe and all of that, but I think that the alignment of the halyards could have been better or thought out slightly better. Um, then I also believe that on the port side there are sheeting blocks or blockers or stoppers missing, meaning that if you use the port side to uh, run your Code Zero or Jenacker, uh, you use the winch, which is an option, but you use the winch. The problem is that once you use the winch on the port side, you can't trim your halyard of the Code Zero or the Jenacker. So what they did on the starboard side, actually they've added a block and a stopper, so you can use that to lock off the sheet and you can keep using the winch for other things. I think they should do that on the port side as well, to be honest. Uh, we may add that later on ourselves. I'm very enthu enthusiastic about the uh, Flying Barber Outholder. I think it's a must have for every catamaran. Uh, the only thing where I think needs to be improved is that the soft shackles that come with that system are quite, I would even say dangerous because they are soft shackles with a metal clamp inside and it's very easy to get your uh, finger in there basically. So we replace them with normal soft shackles. Uh, one of the other things that I think needs improvement uh, or yeah, could use improvement is the original setup is that there is one uh, plotter on the starboard side outside, a Raymarine 7 uh, inch plotter, which is not that big, uh, but it works. And the idea is that you can use an iPad inside to, um, to mirror that screen and to use that screen. So the boat only comes with one plotter. There is an option to get a second plotter and the second plotter is I think a 9 or even a 12 inch plotter on the port side steering uh, on the helm station. Again, with the ID that you can use an iPad or an Android tablet to mirror uh, the plotter inside. Now, what we saw is that actually the Wi-Fi signal between the plotter and a possible tablet is not strong enough. In other words, if you use it inside, yes, it works. But if you want to, for example, move the map within the plotter, the signal is just, is just not strong enough to do that in a fluent, uh, responsive mm -hmm. way. So we ended up buying a uh, second plotter, a second Raymarine plotter, nine inch plotter, and we've installed that permanently inside. And then of course, the whole Wi-Fi linking works perfectly um, uh, inside or where you're in your bed, etc. I think so that's, I get the ID, but I think the, the Wi-Fi signal was just not strong enough for that, uh, for that ID to work. So I would highly recommend the second plotter. Another point is that uh, a lot of people uh, are questioning how good is the the, how good is the visibility from the helm stations? And we both, I, can, uh, I mean, we can clearly say it is very good. It's literally 360 degrees. You can see your sails, you can see all around you, you can see everyone on the boat. Uh, it works really, really well, even when it's dark. The only problem I think is when you leave, if you have the optional covers on the sides, so the enclosures, um, I mean, after a couple of days of sailing on, uh, at sea, it, the salt builds up there and then looking through those with salt, through the windows, the front windows, which also are covered in salt, obviously. And then at night, that's a bit of, a, mm. of, yeah, of pushing it, I would say. So if you, but if you roll them up, there is 
at night with salt spray, etc. The visibility is still really, really good and you're really safe. You don't have to climb up the stairs. You can always have the eyesight with your partner or anyone else on the boat. I think, uh, I personally think that, I mean, the, 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 the helm stage in the back are, mm -hmm. are the way to go. All right, so uh, moving on to the, uh, the, 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 the interior and the comfort of the boat. We chose for the uh, white version, the white wooden, and it makes it even more light than it is already. Uh, there are no uh, storage closets in the galley uh, in the top of no. the boat, so uh, it's very open and it, you have a lot of space and it's very, it's light and it's minimalistic and I, I really love the interior. I think a lot of people uh, would at first miss the storage lockers uh, up there, but for me and for you as well, especially with the lagoon, every time you, have, you see them, I mean, they're, they're in your face. And, mm -hmm. and we like the sort of the clean, open, airy feel of this saloon. It's simple, it's light, but it's really fresh. It really fits, it, it fits the boat, I would say. Mm -hmm. What else? I love the bed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all three. Can I, can I go to bed already? <laughs> no. Um, no, it's it's all three of them and they're super big. And uh, they are even bigger than our bed at home. Uh, it's two by two meters. Yeah. It's a square bed, two it's by two meters. Bed. It's yeah. enormous. We we've never seen this on any other no, boat. No. Also, the, the for the guests in the guest cabins, the beds are, I think, one eighty or two meters by one sixty or something. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. really, if you have guests on board, they uh, they don't have to uh, squeeze in. You can have big guests. In our case, our most of our friends are Dutch, and they will fit. <laughs> yeah, we were looking for a nice big bathroom, and we found it. Yes. And it's perfect, it's really nice. And even if you are taking a shower in the owner's uh, cabin, uh, what you told before uh, at the Bay of Biscay, you're taking a shower with big waves, but you can also uh, see the waves outside yeah. because there is a big window in the bathroom. Uh, One of the things yeah. I like, I'm, I mean, I'm almost, almost two meters tall and I can stand under the shower and the water actually doesn't come from the front, it actually comes from the top. It's really huge and we have a lot of people that come over and, and, and wanted to see the boat from the inside. Mm -hmm. And a lot of them came from much bigger boats, monos and catamarans. And they said they would have never expected such a big bathroom in, uh, in, a, in a 37, 38 foot boat. The princess seats are an option. Uh, we chose to not to take the princess seats yep. and I really like it because now it's an open view and we don't have the seats. You can sit there as well, but it's open. There are no lines, there's no, yeah, yeah nothing can, yeah. attached. It adds to the sort of minimalistic sporty look, uh, but it also has a very practical size that when you run the Code Zero or the Jenneker, Actually, uh, there's a much less of uh, uh, obstruction for those sails. So uh, I would hide, and I also thought that because on the boat that we test sailed, they had uh, the princess seats. I personally also think that the princess seats were a bit out of proportion. They were a bit too big for this boat. Um, so I mean, we're super happy with the fact that we did not go for the princess seats. Yeah. When we uh, sailed the Lagoon 42, uh, the bench in well, the back. Uh, you couldn't sit there if the dinghy uh, was hanging in the davits. Yep. Uh, you couldn't sit there because the, the dinghy was in your neck. Yeah. And I really like how the davits in the boat is installed over here. Uh, the boat, you don't see it. If, you, if we look outside right now, we almost don't see the dinghy. And you can sit on the couch normally. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah. Of anything. course, there's the point of the sheets. So depending on the sheet angle, uh, one of the sheets mm -hmm. may slightly cross the bench. So you have to, you can't sit there with three or four people next to each other, which in our case is not relevant. But that that, that is a point to consider. But but at least you can sit there. Uh, yes, and when you're at anchor, you don't constantly look at the uh, at the dinghy hanging yeah. there yeah. because yeah. the dinghy you look over it. Uh, of course, the downside is that of having the, link, the dinghy lower is that, you know, waves could catch it, etc. Uh, well, we, I mean, we haven't been in super rough weather, but we've been in weather with, I mean, well, yeah, uh, 30, 40, I it yeah, was rough. yeah, well, felt <laughs> rough, 30, 40 knots, uh, serious uh, seas uh, coming from the back, and uh, the the boat, it's, it's it's high enough out of the water. We also leave the uh, 20 horsepower 
uh, outboard engine on there for the fairly short trips, we will be taking that engine off when we did go when we were doing like really big long passages. But for now, we left it on and it's perfect, perfect. because it's also the construction is made that it actually you raise the dinghy against the Dave David, so it's it doesn't move. It's it's stuck there, and I think that's a big part. It doesn't move. It doesn't swing, and I think that's a, that's a must have. The flat roof uh, upstairs we chose for the hardened rooftop. Uh, you can choose for a um... retractable uh, targa top sliding roof. Uh, <laughs> okay, again, the, <laughs> the demo boat had it. It looked really nice, and I think it would work really well in in, 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 the, in, in the Netherlands or, or yeah, like yeah, slightly colder. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. We do like a lot of shade because, well, in the countries we are visiting, it's warm and it's sunny. Uh, plus, the big plus, uh, we have a rooftop full of solar panels yeah. right now. Yeah. So there's uh, roughly 1400 watts of panels up on the roof and another 1000 watts on the back. So we have 2400 watts of solar in total, uh, completely uh, making a, the need for a generator obsolete. Generator is also not an option on the boat, factory, by factory, by the way. I think of the design is that the positioning of the life raft is on the back and it's very easy to uh, to basically get to, to cut it open and cut it loose. Uh, even when the boat, and it, I don't think that will ever happen, but even if the boat would flip, it's easy to reach. There is, uh, you don't have to drag the life raft across the cockpit to get it somewhere. I think that's a safety thing. I hope it will never happen. <laughs> ah, <but>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> A really big plus is the galley. It's up and you're cooking, you are in contact with each other if the other one is at the steering wheel. Um, yeah, if you're outside and you want to take a drink, uh, the fridge it's close by. Um, actually, yeah, it's yeah. perfect shaped, uh, an L-shaped galley uh, with two sinks. Uh, always easy and yeah. yeah. I think the two sinks are super useful. Yeah. Uh, it's a must. and. Uh, I know that most production catamarans nowadays have a galley up, but some don't. And I personally, or we personally don't see the reason to have a galley down because one of the whole reasons to get a catamaran is that when you're cooking, you don't have to go into the basement to cook basically. Mm -hmm. Although some have windows, etc. but you want to be connected all the time. Mm -hmm. And that's what this, this layout definitely brings. So of course, there are also a couple of, uh, I would say, uh, improvements that could be made uh, or cons, if you want to call it that way on the non-sailing slash comfort slash interior uh, in the interior category. So which are those? Well, actually we don't really like the uh, standard fans. Uh, they are loud and they are... Um, they don't well, move much air. No. And actually they're not standard. They're actually a, an option. Here, here. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, oh yeah, they're there. Uh, oh. the, the fans are actually an option. So you actually pay for oh. them. Okay. But then the fans that you get are actually not that great. I think... Uh, I think they should do better. Uh, we've upgraded them to different ones. We think they can improve the interior lights. Uh, it's very bright and we were expecting a dimmer. So even by night when you're having dinner that you can dim the light a little bit and it's more cozy. Um, yeah, yeah, we expected it was yeah with a dimmer and uh, we think it's too light. Yeah, I think 2021 most boats have dimmable and even uh, temperature, like color temperature, adjustable uh, lighting inside. I think that's, uh, I think that's what the boat should have. Mm -hmm. Then we stay at the light because uh, they're outside. There is no light, um, so if we are having dinner outside or uh, sit outside during the night, uh, there is no light at all. Um, yeah. yeah. We'll probably be installing that, but that's uh, something that uh, I think has been overlooked, yeah. maybe. So the boat comes standard with uh, two times 29 horsepower engines. Uh, that may sound as not that much, but actually for a boat this size and with a fairly low windage profile, it actually works perfectly fine. Uh, we have the optional folding propellers as well. Um, so the, the engines are perfectly fine. They're Yanmar engines, uh, well thoroughly tested, etc. So that's all good. The only downside, I guess, of the two steering wheels on the back is that when you are standing on the at the steering wheel, under, under engine power, uh, you actually are basically on top of the engine. So uh, there, then it becomes quite loud. And I think that's probably the only time that a uh, raised or a flybridge uh, helm station actually is preferable, I would say. But that's the only time. <laughs> For the rest, 
two steering wheels in the back are the way to go. So uh, what we really like about the boat is that it has very light and airy interior um, and they use very uh, nice light wood. Um, one of the things I think that could have been improved, they have actually installed the, the thicker, the harder wood the, uh, in the areas where you, where you possibly hit you know, the corners, etc. Et I think that some more parts could have been uh, done with slightly thicker, slightly harder wood. There are a couple of edges where actually where, for example, when you wear your life vest and you have a steel hook, uh, there are a couple of places at the nav station where you can easily, uh, fairly easily damage the, the woodwork there. I think it uh, would be nice to, uh, I think they'd save weight uh, here and there, which is very good. But sometimes I think that uh, a slightly heavier wood or a, a stronger material would have been a better option. Mm -hmm. Another thing is that, so on the option list there's a water maker. I think it's a very reliable water maker. So I, if I pronounce it correctly, it's De Selenator. It's a French brand, I believe. It makes 12, uh, 60 liters an hour on 12 volts. Uh, thoroughly tested, works well. The problem is, uh, we didn't go for that option, although we did have a water maker, we installed a different water maker off the market because the controls for the water maker were actually installed and had to be controlled from uh, within the port engine room or engine compartment. And I personally don't like to open an engine compartment when we're uh, at sea with the uh, following season and heavy waves uh, on the back. Uh, and those, uh, those doors or those engine compartments, when not closed, they will get wet with every with an occasional wave, so you don't want to open those things uh, to to turn on and off the, the water maker. So that's the reason why we didn't go for the water maker option from the factory. So what's your verdict on the, on the boat after a month? I love it. I really I think it's a really good choice, and uh, it's exactly what the brochure tells you. Um, yeah, it makes all the promises true. Um, yeah, it sails really good, uh, the comfort is really nice, it's minimalistic, um, yeah, it's simple but sporty, um, yeah. yeah, it's yeah perfect. Yeah, I think after, after a month of sailing this boat, I think we can clearly say the boat is big enough for two persons for sure, it has more than enough storage, beds and everything, it really sails well, it's simple to sail, um, and it actually it also looks good. Mm -hmm. Um, so how we see it is actually is that the, the, the team at Access, very experienced people, and they just took the best elements of all existing boats basically, and they just mm -hmm. put it in. It's really, for us, it feels like a new generation boat. It is a new boat and it really, uh, it delivers. It yeah. delivers on all its, its promises basically. And it just works well, and it works really well for us. You know, we, we're just two people, we work from the boat, uh, we have everything we need. Uh, and, and, and even and I, with with well limited experience in sailing, I can sail the boat uh, myself actually now yeah. in a month. So this was our review from the XS11. Uh, we hope you liked it. If you have any questions, uh, please ask them down below here, and we will try to answer them. If you like it, to follow us on the Instagram, you can follow us at Sailing Bombarda. Well, we hope you liked the video. Uh, you can. Do something with it and uh, make a good choice. Yeah, making good choice. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.